Jokes, come on. <laughs> um, it's nice to see the first iteration, especially. It was nice to see them, re some of those players, really coming into their own. Yeah, that is true, man. The good old days, Haunts Lady. Although they are not Wukong Gaming level, that certainly was a once in a lifetime appearance. Yeah, um, that was so oh strange. I, at this point, I just want to wonder, like, I want to know who in chat remembers Wukong Gaming. Yeah, there's, uh, there's the question. If you remember Wukong Gaming, then let yourselves be heard. Because that was certainly... Do you remember any fun. of the player names? Uh, no. Oh, I also forgot them. My memory tried to erase them as quickly as possible. I will find them for you while the draft begins. Why <laughs> man, this time being banned out? All right. Shout out to Uki, says I member. There we go. All right. Um, All right. Got him. Ready? You got him? Okay. Tell me some of the names. Uh, that would be, um, Ailing, yeah. Zero, Moon, Lang, and Ieho. I I I oh, man. But Ailing, I definitely remember. That, that sounds yeah. familiar. None of those players transferred over, really. But, hey, they, they won a map versus RPG back in the day. They did it with a Karazim, Kerrigan, Genji, Greymane, Arthas composition. And, you know, they, they manifested themselves into uh, the history of HOTS, history of Heroes of the Storm. Their names shall never, never be forgotten. All it takes is one season yeah, of pro play. The, uh... That's like the second worst team, I think. I don't know if Raven beat them in that in the end. Um, wasn't there also a team uh, with a murky logo in, in China that was really bad? W weren't they called Hiss or uh, Kiss? Kiss? Oh, God, Kiss. Oh, I forgot about Kiss. Kiss with a murky logo. Uh, they were also atrocious. Yeah, we've, we've had some weird ones. Yeah, key is, keep it si uh, key is, K I S, keep it simple. Keep um, it simple, man. No, they have a higher win rate. Thirteen percent win rate for <laughs> Kiss. Wukong had a grand total of four percent win rate. Wow. See that that was when Tetra and I was still green and unexperienced, inexperienced in China. We yeah. didn't have any idea what we signed up to. Indeedy, indeedy. Well then. We see a Karazi making a return this time with Reyna for CE, already starting off very aggressively with their composition. All right. So, let's actually take a look. Karazim coming in from 365. He also played, he already played a deadly Karazim earlier against uh, SPT. Really good to see him back on that. Yurel, a new Barak coming in as well. Super solid. That's going to be a lot of lockdown Tetris. So much. So many stuns and slows coming in from Yurel and Anubrek. Is it going to be another melee assassin, or are we going, are we going back to double range for C? What do you think? Uh, well, we're going to see. With a Cassia on the board, I think we have to go double ranged because Cassia is very good against melee yeah. assassins. Unless it's someone like an Illidan who can maybe outplay her if he just dances behind her. We'll have to see. Thrall, no, maybe. It's a break up. This could be a Bloodlust comp for KT. Oh, you better bet that this is one. I mean, I don't think it will be, but it could be. I think KT is uh, is going crazy here right now. But they go for the mage. That is an XTQ um, Jaina, I believe. So it looks correct. like Alufil will be back on his Jimmy. Um, and it's very smart. You know, you can't always get away with double, uh, triple melee, if you will, with a melee assassin. That's exactly what Tetra and I were talking about earlier. Sometimes against certain heroes like Cassia, you just need the mage to blow her up. And... There's hardly any other mage better suited for this task than uh, the Jaina. And as such, the Jaina, like you said, with decent blow up, Bunker is going to be a good target. Like, you probably don't want to hit the Bunker, you want to blow up Blaze first, but if you yep. have to hit something, might as well be the Bunker. Yep, you better blow that up. The more damage you deliver instantly onto the Bunker, the more quickly you can then continue to focus on to the members inside. And oftentimes, you know, when you blow up a Bunker, like surprisingly quickly, the enemy team members won't even be able to exit it in time, and they will all be ca caught in a in a quarter, you know, all in that same location. And then you can really, really get that value from your AOE damaging abilities and crowd control effects. And with the slow and chase potential, there's a pretty decent chance that we could see some nice uh, solid plays coming in here. 
from CE, but that Cassia is really keep, uh, drawing my eye here. Once again, against heroes like Raider and Karasim, Cassia can just do so many micro tricks that there's a small chance this could work. For now, though, we are heading into game number two. And on the left-hand side, it is KT. And they have TWTWT, Kiaru, Lotus, Timeless, and Bad. Facing them is Chal Eng, featuring Aluthal, XTQ, 365, KTY, and Yuyu. And this is a team that looks reinvigorated, that looks as good as they have last face when uh, they were barely just missing out top one position. They placed third, if I recall correctly. And uh, yeah, they are our two time China champions for a reason, you know. CE the most successful team uh, in current history in China after SPT, behind SPT. This is correct. As we do see everyone just starting slow once again. Dana's gone for a globe build. That is mm. interesting on this map. Yeah, <laughs> given the fact that it's a two lane map and you don't really have the chance to collect as many globes, but I think it's more or less just for the mana region because you don't even have to have it completed, Fingers of Frost that is. Even if you have it half completed or you got a couple more stacks than that, you're still going to have a noticeable mana regen uh, increase. And oftentimes when these fights prolong near the Immortals, that is already all you need. So then, beautiful. Up stepping as best he can, keeping himself out of the immediate danger that we could see here. But KT actually putting on a great show in terms of wave clear and getting quite a few stacks for Hanzo uh, already in this early stages of yep. the game, while Urel plays it very safely. Is that actually going to go for a full lane swap? Uh, I agree with that decision. I think that is exactly what they need to do. They could also try to steal the bottom mercenary camp to mirror the movements here. Now, two heroes, as you said uh, earlier already while we we're diving into the game, that I'm a little worried about when uh, looking at these drafts is Karzim and Raynor. We have a double blind. We have so much crowd control as well. Johanna with that Condemn. If you've ever played Karzim against Johanna, then you will know how annoying it can be to face one because she's always going to make you uh, miss auto attacks. She's always going to bring you out of position because of that Condemn. And uh, it's not going to be an easy thing. And because of that duel in the middle between Johanna and Anubrek, which Anubrek lost, without a frontliner, they can no longer contest this bottom mercenary camp CE that is. Let's see, do back it up and leave it. But once again, they have Reyna with Exterminator, so they can clear this up very quickly. So that's not something they have to worry about too much as they do begin doing that. In the meantime, Lotus has been left up here to duel against KTY. A range hero versus a melee hero should always go in favor of the range. Yeah, and of course, they also need Hanzo for that additional Merc clear speed already. They're uh, making him retreat off that top lane. Blaze is going to take over as well. Timeless has no difficulties whatsoever to deal with one uh, new break and one Rainer. Johanna just seems like the perfect pick here, by the way. She's strong against all those stunning effects because of her iron skin. She's really awesome against Rainer and Karazim. I think they basically hit the nail on the head here with that draft, especially Timeless, who normally performs admirably well when playing that hero. Pressure being applied. KT, look, KTY, sorry, looking to move on to KT. And they get the slow onto bad. Borrow charge comes up just short and a lovely counter stun coming in from Kiaru. Yeah, you know why that didn't land by, uh, by Anubrek? It was not because he mistimed it or misaimed it, but he didn't go for Under King. At level 4, he went for the bed of barbs. That means he's now going to have an additional slowing in there, additional damage over time, but as a sacrifice or as a drawback, he had to sacrifice a lot of that initiation range. Quick wave clear, quick merc clear. That's the Fallen Shaman dies before it even gets that much damage onto the gate. The bot one was cleared up even quicker, though, by CE, as we do see... The defensive play coming in from CE as they try to bat away KT. Rayner is burning down the enemy immortal, but he's taking a long time to do it. Yeah, he's taking a long time, and there's only so much CE can do as a four-man unit. Now they even get Jimmy into the mix there as well. They really, really want to get that fight going, and it looks good like with hard. that lockdown by Urel, they're on a good path here to do acquire exactly that. Boom! And finally sniped by the Ar by the Avenging Wrap. Rainer had to come across the map to join in this, though, as the Immortal still continues to whittle down. Hanzo looks for snipes as Yarel just dives him. Can't burn down the Immortal if you're oh. dead. 365 picks up the kill. 
that one time Hanzo gets a little too cheeky, gets a little too aggressive, and did underestimate the mobility coming in here by CE. He paid for it with his life. Timeless securing that immortal. Is he going to fall after as well? It looks like it. Don't think Iron Skin was ready there. Down goes Johanna CE. They don't finish off the immortal, but they do take a pretty good half level lead that they can now begin to work on. Rufal's timing being pretty immaculate here. Already there to chip down this Immortal. Doesn't even get any value from those ranged attacks. Gets chipped down to melee range immediately. And I'm pretty sure that's only going to be one measly tower in favor of KT here with that objective. They definitely wanted to achieve a little more with that. They definitely do indeed. But so far they have yet to have such an opportunity. They are getting zoned out at least a little bit. Uh, GWT though, finally frontlining. They begin to take down some towers. So KT do gain a nice little jump in XP there, which will get them to level 7. In the meantime, CE is mirroring them, just already further ahead. Yep, very true. And they also have mercenaries in tow, of course, which means uh, they're going to be able to maybe push all the way in for that fort. But look at that. KT, it's almost a game of mirrors here, if you will. Uh, the teams are doing the exact same thing. The only difference being is that CE was able to get more kills on their accounts, and that means that they're going to have a slight experience lead, despite the fact that uh, both of those teams now just got a port in the control. So now then, quick clean up onto that bot lane, giving CE more breathing room, as actually Zhu takes an interesting port position. But he now moves back and will be able to go back to base safely, get some mana in time for the next objective phase. Alrighty then. Now, mercenaries are about to respawn here, I think. Especially uh, talking about the Fallen Shaman camps. That's just, that's actually one of those uh, things to consider as well sometimes when stalling out mercenary camps. Because the longer you take to actually walk on that platform and take it over, the longer it's also going to take for those mercenaries to respawn. And sometimes when objectives go very quickly, you might actually not have them back, while the opponents who took it earlier will have that mercenary camp back. Be it as it may, Juya already using those beetles to intercept tower aggro, and that allows them to take the tower out altogether. Juya pulls back, and uh, just to reiterate on something, just a very quick tangent. Uh, what we were saying earlier, I have just done research, and since HGC has started, we have never had a team with a lower win rate than uh, team Wukong game. There you go. In the entirety of HGC all across the globe? Entirety of HGC in the top, in the four regions in HGC nice. Europe, America, China, and South Korea. No team has ever got less than 4% win rate. Wow. <laughs> that is a nice record. Unfortunately, not a good record. one. record! Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> As we see them move in, looking for Timeless, but a nice disengage. Water Elemental actually used a bit early there by XTQ. Yeah. Nobody does it better than HEC China when it comes to maintaining those low win rates. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do a lot of things well, especially lose. As we <laughs> Half time show achieved by CE here, looking to make some more plays. They're actually setting up mm -hmm. for the Immortal and maybe to trap, but Zhu shows himself a little bit early. Yeah, nice vision provided here by the Beetle and by the Banshee from Rainer. The water Elemental is still on cooldown, though it was used to scout earlier during the first 50%. Now, what is KT trying to do here? Are they trying to defend Hanzo? The longer you keep Hanzo occupied uh, defending, the better it's going to be. Oh, that was needed, in my opinion. I think they were actually afraid yeah. of Cocoon. I mean, if the Cocoon had come out, that would have looked amazing. Yep. But in this case... That was pretty. If it, that was pretty unnecessary, and well, Kaku, uh, sorry, not Kakoon. Uh, Cleanse doesn't have the shortest cooldown. Mm -hmm. No, it has a 60-second time window, so uh, that definitely means that if they wanted to lock someone down, now is the time to do exactly that. Look at Kiaru though, in the bottom, tries to go for a cheeky flank. XDQ might be the prime target here. Jet propulsion coming in. Good Dragon Arrow, though, for the counter. They're focusing XTQ, but a quick heal from 365 keeps him alive. Down goes that bunker as they turn onto Kiara, who pops the Pyromania. Good Ancestral, and the ball oh. so close to achieving the double kill. Quick heal from 365 keeps those two alive, but a loophole has been abandoned. The poor lad, down he goes. 
Triple kill, baby. Time for KT to get that value, to strike back and take what is theirs. Let's take another look at that team fight here. Beautiful engaged flank there by Kiara. The bunker actually causing him to stay safe for now. A massive arrow landing on several people there as well. Even the cocoon on Cassia can prevent the inevitable. And then a nice spread here actually by 365 in XTQ, preventing further things from happening. And also, nice ignorance on uh, the RL, not giving her any healing value. So from start to finish, that was a really, really nice defense by KT. Indeed it was. Uh, is your Kel'Thuzad voice any good by any chance? Because I would like an absolute perfection if you have one. Oh, you did a really good one yesterday. Absolute I perfection. I can't do it. I mean, I still liked it. As we see a black shield coming in. Condemned, looking for a loophole. Oh, Cassia! There's the blind, but Cassia getting completely out of the way. Gets to the bunker twice. Juking Zuyu multiple times. And the hammer of KTY. And Cassia just outplayed everyone. Yeah, nice. Stutter step uh, micro there, if you will, or hopping micro into the bunker. Bunker step. I think that could be a new term. Bunker step micro. I see that. Yeah, I like bunker step. As we see the quick clear by CE continuing to hold control. They're not as far ahead as they would like them. All right. Favorite voice line, by the way, after a team fight that just went pretty south of one team. A little vicious, don't you think? Oh, yeah, Grey Mains. Oh, just bring them oh, back. Don't you think? Yeah, we do. We do some voice lines. As we do see, um, we do see CE grabbing the fallen shaman. I'm trying to think of other really good uh, character voice lines. Have you ever uh, gotten first blood on white main with the white main announcer? I don't play white main that often, so oh, no. It's so good. She's having a giggle. She's having the giggle of her lifetime, and it's absolutely fabulous. That's good. I mean, her laughter is just fantastic <laughs> voice. I get dead real, quite frankly. As we see CE removing onto the point. And... So, Tetcher, I, I know you're a little bit into voice acting, right? So, if you had to do a giggling laughter or just laughing altogether, would you actually look at something that you find truly funny? Or would you try to, face, uh, to fake it? Both. You do, you do every variation you can and let them use the best one. Cool. That's nice. I can see that being pretty amusing, like you trying to go for all these laughing sequences and uh, just yeah. having a good time while doing so. If you've got someone in the uh, studio with you, have them give you a tickle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> next level. As we see CE moving onto the, uh, onto the Immortal. Once again, going to burn that down. Quick rush in, quick rush out. That's their strategy right now. Rush in, do as much damage as they can, but it's actually forcing out a defender to be used here. Yeah, that was a good Arden Defender, though, in my opinion, still, though, because uh, KTY maintains a very healthy health count, which is uh, really needed as well. And it also baited out a couple of damaging abilities. Uh, Bless Shield, for example, the Ball Lightning as well was used. So those are two significant cooldowns for KT now. They can't fall back on. Mortals clash in the center of the map. Moving back into the defensive positions for each team. Yarel using the opportunity to quickly clear top lane and grab some more experience for CE. But this has given time for Kiaru and Hanzo to do at least a little bit of damage and even try to burn down the Banshee, but it's able to survive. Yep, and uh, the poke is not to, uh, to be underestimated here for KT with those Cassia and Hanzo uh, shots as well. KTY though jumping in like a champion here up to this point. KT, uh, sorry, Kiaru. And timeless are a little low in HP, especially a Blaze, but he's going to leash that back up. So what is CE going to do now that they have established a little bit of a better position in the middle? Oh, just oh. dodge, man. Yeah, Burrow charging the Blessed Shield. A one-minute cooldown being burned. Very cool, and you immediately see CE trying to move forward as one of the biggest counter engages is gone. Now that the Frosters has been used by Blaze as well, both of the counter engages, as is Dragon Arrow, this yeah. is all about CE now. Now they can choose their engagement perfectly. Yeah, they still have that Cocoon. They still have the Seven Sider to follow Wood up on, and there's literally nothing left except the Ball Lightning for KT Defense, and they realize yeah. that. They know that, that they've just blown all of their powder uh, in one shot, and uh, they're just going to have to play patiently now and defend a little bit. This is basically a war of attrition right now. Blaze Charge is back off cooldown, so he will be able to re-engage mm -hmm. at least a little bit with that Jet Propulsion. We see another Barra Charge used by Zhuyu, keeping him out of danger for the moment. They focus onto Kiara, who's nice used Bunker kill. already, and he goes down. They don't even burn seven-sided for that. 
didn't even have to use it. That means 365 still has it left, Ooh. and it goes on TWT. The water elemental saved as well. Slow the doge, slow and get him. Slow, slow, dead. And now it's all about Lotus being chased down. Nowhere to go. Ring of Frost and Timeless. Oh, Timeless. He is left alone. <laughs> he's gonna wine skin. He's gonna take them all. Come at me. I'll take you all on. As he's just gonna get surrounded and take it out. <laughs> it was a good show. Uh, that's for sure. But Johanna, even the mightiest of Crusaders couldn't have withstood that pressure. And look at those mana bars on three people. CE really, really played this smartly and manage their resources so well until the end. I mean, a lot of people say China is all about aggression, but that was quite the opposite. That was patiently fought until the bitter end. And well, this might actually be the bitter end. The shield's not great, but 16 might be hit by CE on the way through. This in fact, it will certainly be, which means they can maybe just get a big push in. And if they can get multiple kills, this could result in a game end. They don't have the arrow yet, but she is now on the way. She's been off the minimap for a while, so this might result in a nice little bait play by CE, who, who successfully spread the entire duration of the ball lightning. Yep, that was uh, that was pretty well done <laughs> in one way or the other. So, uh, bad. Oh, a little bit of trouble. I think that is going to be a quick keep and see. Is probably. Oh, I don't think it's going to get the keep. Yeah, very quick clear speed. Very nicely done by KT. And that's such keep Double lives. Dragon arrow onto two members. Water elemental immediately from the route side as the cocoon is dropped onto the casket. It's popped out very quickly. Ancestral on blade in the bunker to keep him alive. But he's taking huge damage from KT. Why? Do you had an interesting borrow charge there? Not actually getting anything. But now it's all about the retreat for CE as they just blew everything for that sustain. Yeah, but the most important thing here, the most important piece of news for KT is that the keep is still standing. Um, better than it ever did, actually. So, really good for them. Uh, that means they're still in that game. And uh, now they're going to have to stabilize. I really see a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel for KT. They seem to stabilize. They seem to be able to push CE back more and more. Donna doesn't have her level 7 quest completed yet, does she? No, I don't think she, I don't think time was actually achieved that. I don't think so either. She might be able to do it now. Now, yep. there we go. <laughs> but <laughs> died, died for the effort. So congratulations, you completed the quest. Bad news, your team might just lose the game right now. As bad is just absolutely deleted. They could try oh. get breaking up. Oh, timed a little bit too early, but it's still in. Uh, ah, cheeky dog sneaks away. All right, here comes the cavalry. We see mercenaries, minions, everything is pouring in to try and take down this core. That was a nice stun there on three people. That's actually delaying things. And we have seen CE fail to take cores earlier as well against SBT. So I think they're going to retreat after all. That's a good decision. Yeah, look at those health bars. Yeah. Even in a situation where there were two people up, they decide against it and back up, play the safe play. The mm -hmm. Immortal's up, they can pull back and run to the Immortal and then take oh. another lead. In the meantime, though, oh, Merc can push in the bot lane value. I was going to say, there's a Fallen Shaman camp and a Goatman camp actually trying to take down the bottom keep. They're going to have to take care of this immediately. So yeah, they learn from their mistakes, but that keep is already taking so much damage, Tetcher. The keep is alive, though, and that's the important part here. As CE, do not uh, do not take the lead. Actually, KT using their time while mm -hmm. CE was defending to take a big lead in the Immortals. Now CE just wants to fight them. Ball Lightning Ooh. does get a good spread once again. Three six five dropped very low as KT is right in the back line. Yeah, and that is the power of Jaina. You just pop those bunkers like they were made out of. Uh, butter here, and uh, also everybody escaping that bunker still got slowed by XTQ. Look at Arel, she was actually the one about to get punished here. 365 cleansing people left, right, and center. A triple kill, make it a quad kill, maybe if Timeless ends up falling as well. And CE, yeah. they are probably going to try and finish that immortal, right? Uh, no, it's about that core now. Still low spawn timers, it's risky, yeah. but they. Adds two catapults. Uh, Karin <laughs> so was not the greatest support tetra to keep everybody alive in those situations. He's not. I mean, Karin's the basically kept them alive during that fight as he dived in with no health and was able to survive just at the edge. But look at their race potential. Hanzo just dives to the middle to try and get oh. the perfect scatter arrow, but it does not work. So unless Blaze can do something good, move by Zhu, prevented the stun onto his teammates, and that will be GG. Game number two and the series goes over to CE. Nicely done. A little...
little uncoordinated at some point by C. Not by, not a perfect game.